back at it again. Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. We're doing some more ACT prep. And this problem we're about to do now, I'm a little, a little happy about doing this problem because this problem almost like kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. I was trying to work this out with one of my students earlier, earlier today, and it threw me for a loop a little bit. I thought it was like one of them SAT questions where you got to just plug in values for the variables they give you because all they gave us is variables in this problem. And you can read along because the actual problem is written in the description notes underneath of the video if you're watching this on YouTube. All right, so here it goes. If the total cost of X apples, X is a variable, X apples, meaning we don't know how many apples it is. It could be any random number of apples, right? It could be like, I don't know, 10,000 apples, like how them math textbook word problems be, right? Somebody buying 10,000 apples from the grocery store. Like, <laughs> they're not even going wholesale. It's not like... You know, I, I can understand if you got like a like a, a apple cider company or something or an apple juice company or an apple pie company, but these people just be randomly buying 10,000 apples. But anyway, if the total cost of X apples is B cents and B is a variable, so it's a certain amount of cents, a certain amount of money, what is a general formula for the cost in cents of Y apples? This is a proportion problem. But what threw me off was when they said, what is the general formula for the cost, right? That threw me off. It shouldn't have thrown me off, but it did throw me off, right? Because if you see a problem where it says, if something is related to something, then how is, how is this related to this? That's a proportion problem. That's a giveaway that it's a proportion problem. But when they say, what is the general formula for the cost and sense of Y apples? So they're saying, if you buy this certain amount of apples, right, the total cost is this. But if you buy that amount of apples, then what would the total cost be, right? Usually they'll be like, okay, what would the total cost be if you buy this amount of apples? They'll be more straightforward, but they weren't. And I expected them, I underestimated the people that generated these sample questions, right? Because, yeah, so you got to look out for that. So you still got to look to see, is it a proportion or not? And it is a proportion because it says, if the total cost of X apples is B cents, so this many apples cost this much money. That could be represented as a fraction, right? That's like cost per apple, right? Cost per apple, right? And then it says, what's, what is the ge a general formula for the cost of a different, a different amount of apples, right? So they gave us three variables instead of giving us four. So we can create our fourth variable. So for the first part of the problem, let's create a, a ratio for that. If the total cost of X apples is B cents. So let's say X on top, X apples is B cents. The total cost of X apples is B cents, right? So number of apples, cost. Number of apples, cost is equal to number of apples over cost. But we don't have a variable for that. So what we got to do is we got to pick a variable because we want a general formula that represents the cost of the cost of this many apples. All right. So we got that means we got to pick a variable and solve for it. Pick a variable here and solve for it. Let's just say G because it asks us for a general formula. Right. So this many apples cost this much. This many apples cost this much. And we want to know what is the general formula for it, meaning this is equal to what? So G is equal to what? That's what we gotta do. G is equal to what? So basically we gotta solve for G. But it's a literal equation. It's what we call a literal equation because we got a bunch of variables, right? So when, when we solve it, we're not gonna have a numerical value, but we're gonna have, what we're gonna have is, we're gonna have an expression that includes other variables. That's what we're gonna have, all right? So because this is a proportion, you know how I do, I'm doing Malcolm X method. One diagonal and another diagonal. I do that to get rid of the get rid of the fractions. That's the first thing I do. I want to get rid of the fractions. So I'm doing I'm doing g times x. So that's g x. It don't matter if you do x g g x. It don't matter. And then I'm doing b y. G x equals b y. Right. So g x equals b y. And again, we're trying to find a general formula. Meaning we're trying to solve for G. G represents, we're trying to find a general formula for the cost of this many apples, of Y apples, right? This many apples. We know that this many apples cost this much. We want to know how much does this many apples cost. So we want to know what this is, this right here. And we want the formula for that. 
We want the formula for that. So the formula means this is equal to something. That means in order in order to know what what this is equal to, like I got it, like I got it written right here, we got to solve for this. So we got to solve for g. That's why we use the Malcolm X method to cross multiply, right? But now I got to get g by itself. So how do I get g by itself? I get rid of this x. How do I get rid of this x? By doing the op opposite operation for what x is involved in right now. Gx means multiplication. G times x. That's what gx means. Gx means g times x. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. Divide by x. And if I do it on the left side, I got to do it on the right side. So divide that by x. These x's cancel out, leaving you with g is equal to by over x. And this is a multiple choice question. So the answer is clear, right there, clear as day. You know, it's, answer, it's choice D, you know. But yeah, but this, this problem, like, it threw me off a little bit at first because I wasn't like, I wasn't looking at it deeply enough. What, what, what I think part of the problem was, like I said, I underestimated it and I prejudged it without really looking deeply at it. I read the first part of the question and I said, oh, this is one of them SAT-like questions where you got to like just plug the variables in and then go back and see which relationship will give you the answer that you're looking for, you know, in the multiple choice answers, right? And then that would be your correct answer. But um, I don't think that was the way to do it, you know? So yeah, but you know, lesson learned, it's all good, you know? But, you know, definitely practice with problems like this because so that you don't get thrown off when you actually are taking the ACT. All right, I'll see y'all on the next video.